Welcome to the UFC Vegas 91 immediate reaction show where you guys get my immediate reaction for every single matchup as it concludes. Uh, we have 13 fights scheduled, I believe. Headline by uh, flyweight title. Flyweight main event slot. Jesus. It's been a while since I've done this, if you guys can't tell. Um, we have Alex Perez going up against Matthias Nicolau. Obviously, one person will step closer to an eventual flyweight title shot if they can get their momentum back in their favor. Um, I do appreciate everybody's understanding in regards to the delay in content earlier this week. As you guys can see, some new flooring down as well, some new baseboards up. Uh, still got a couple things to fix behind me, as you guys can see with the wiring and all that. But I'm glad to finally be back on camera and get some bells and whistles back in the going for you guys. But uh Vegas 91 is just about to kick off here. Reminder, this is one of those podcasts where I record my reaction for every single fight as it concludes. And then I give you guys the odds that cash for that specific fight as well. And then at the end of the night, I'll bundle that bad boy up together and then release it to you guys in one big video so you guys can check it out. And, you know, people usually want to talk about the fights as soon as they finish up. And I want to give you guys a platform, a comment section to talk about it. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it as well all right let's just get right into it i believe it is a lightweight matchup kicking things off here between mahashate and gabriel benitez let's see who comes out on top what a way to kick off the card as we have two guys going out there and just laying it all on the line. Great performance from both guys. Benitez having more success than I was going to give him credit for it as I uh, have, you know, talked about in the preview and breakdown of this fight. I expected Mahashate to kind of start walking him down and eventually find that finish. But it was a very close fight, but it ends up going Mahashate's way by split decision. Again, very close fight. I think it came down to round one. I got to see the scorecards afterwards, but... Um, I thought uh, Mahashate won round two. I thought Benitez may have edged out round three, but then the first round was very close and possibly could have gone Mahashate's way. But again, uh, bad prediction for me in terms of how I expected the fight to play out. I did not give enough credit to Benitez's uh, ability to maybe walk through the big power that was coming back his way from Mahashate, but it is what it is. Mahashate still comes out on the winning end. Good performance from Benitez, showcasing that he can still go out there and fight with some of the younger guys on the roster. Um, but Mahashate, good experience for him as well to go 15 minutes with a veteran like Benitez and uh, you know start moving forward with his UFC career. All right, let's check out the odds that cashed here. Uh, Mahashate, money line favorite here, coming in at minus 245. By decision plus 320 and the over one and a half cashing at minus 175. Again, these guys were throwing. I think they combined for over 150 significant strikes, um, maybe just less than that, but very great performance from both guys. Uh, but Mahashate is the one that ends up getting his hand raised, kicking off the card by split decision. It seems as though the reign of Leong Na has finally come to the end, and I mean that in the form of. Her performances in the UFC probably won't be on this stage anymore. I believe that's four straight losses for her now in the UFC as Petrovic goes out there and submits her in the opening minute of round three. Um, pretty much like most Nia, uh, Leong Naha fights, right? You got to give her... Uh, some credence in terms of her winning early in fights and she does usually have some good um, uh, success early but if she's unable to muster up any sort of finish she starts to fall off by that sixth minute and that's where opponents really start to really pummel her from that top position and eventually we saw Petrovic close to getting the finish at the ending of the second it ends up going to the third round and that's where she's able to secure the submission of victory so good win for Petrovic there unfortunate end of Liang Na's UFC career, more more than likely. I mean, I'd be surprised if they bring her back for a fifth fight. I would love to see her come back for a fifth fight. She's, you know, always entertaining, always pushing the uh, gas, uh, kind of the, you know, female version of Daniel Lacerda, who doesn't often get his hand raised, but always brings the chaos and always puts on an entertaining fight. Liang Na, kind of the same until she starts to gas out in that sixth or seventh minute. All right, let's check out the odds that cast here. Petrovic, big favorite here. I wasn't feeling comfortable about it earlier this week, but most people can just say, hey, it ended up cashing. Uh, Petrovic, money line, minus 460 comes through. By submission, plus 185. Round three, plus 550. Round three, submission, plus 1100. And the over one and a half cashes at minus 110. Two fights, two favorites, Kicking off the card. Let's see if the next fight, the underdog, can spring the upset or not. 
The underdog does end up coming through as UFC debutante and short notice replacement Chris Padilla goes out there and submits James Lontop or Yontop uh, near the ending of the first round after landing some good takedowns to start off the fight, was eyeing some big shots as well, but it was the last takedown that he landed that opened up the back take that he was able to snatch up that rear naked choke and end up getting the tap from Lontop. Great work from Chris Padilla. Good debut for him. That might be one of those situations where you get like a, you know, I'm not saying that he's Justin James. I, I, I've never really been big on Justin James, but this might be one of those spots where they come in as a short notice UFC debut Tom replacement, uh, pull off a big victory as an uh, underdog, but then go on and lose their next couple of fights. It all depends on how he gets matched up moving forward, but this was a great win for him. Good confidence booster, especially considering how long he's been in the game and how many road bumps it took for him to finally make it to the UFC and get this opportunity and then to get the win in that fashion. Absolutely amazing stuff. Cinderella stuff, essentially, there. But let's see how far Chris Padilla can take this thing. All right. Let's check out the odds that cashed here. Padilla, biggest dog on the card, if I'm not mistaken, coming in at plus 330 and cashing that ticket. By submission, plus 1100. Round three, plus 1200. Put those two, or sorry, round one, plus 1200. Uh, round one submission plus 2,600, and the under 2.5 cash is at minus 180. I expected Lontop to really start to take him into deep waters and chip away at him with big shots, but Padilla had a great game plan in terms of utilizing his wrestling and then eventually opening up that back take and getting that submission. Great win for the big underdog as Chris Padilla wins his UFC debut. Kevin Souza gets another dub for the favorites on the night as she goes out there and pretty much Molly Wobbs or Nick Mann from the jump in this matchup. Now, when I broke it down earlier this week, I expected Mann to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of trying to secure some of the takedown positions. And you saw when she, at the ending of the first round, she was finally able to bite down on the mouthpiece and get a uh, hip throw and, and get that top position, arm and head throw to get that top position. But obviously clock ran out third round she was able to get some weird position even after getting rocked badly but it seemed like she was pretty much beaten you know first couple minutes into that matchup as she started to feel the power and the speed and the uh, explosiveness that Souza was throwing with which allowed Souza to kind of just have a sparring match right she was able to go out there and just hit a heavy bag as Mar Marnik really did not have much to throw in return so um, I think I put a little bit too much emphasis into man's ability to you know want to willingly bite down on the mouthpiece and try to close that distance and not just stay stuck up against the cage the entire time but um not a good look for mon whatsoever i really believe you know what has plagued her throughout her career is a lack of physicality and i expect it to pay off for her here against souza it did a little bit but not to the point that she even won any round either so um good one for Catlin souza went out there and did what she needed to do as a minus 360 favorite Mon almost seemed uh, beaten going into that matchup. Uh, that might even be the end of the UFC run for her as well. I'd be surprised if they give her another matchup after that poor of a performance. Um, but good win for Kevin Souza to notch the first win in her UFC career. Let's check out the odds that cash her. Nothing super juicy. Souza money line minus 360 comes through by decision minus 115. And then the over two and a half cash is at minus 280. Again, Solid work from Suze all around, taking what Marnik Mann was giving her pretty much, and she was able to just style on her pretty much. Uh, almost got a third round stop. Is there a good swarming sequence? But Mann was able to, to eventually uh, parlay that into a takedown and really slow things down once again. So uh, good one for Suza. Still have some question marks in regards to the ceiling that she has in the UFC. She was a former champion in Invicta FC, but um, I wonder how far she can actually take this. And I think the next matchup for her will be a big telltale uh, in regards to what her ceiling is or what her floor will be as well. So good win for Souza uh, as she gets her hand raised by decision. Very close fight, but ultimately Dante Mays gets his hand raised by unanimous decision. I clearly thought he won round one. Round two was the toss-up, as I thought the third round should have been in Kyle Machado's favor. Uh, again, round two, it seemed like it was a close fight, but even as a Machado backer myself, it seemed like Mays, when he was landing, he was getting a bigger reaction out of Machado, which is probably what the judges ended up seeing. Which brings me to a point that I kind of want to touch on here. Now, there's two aspects of judging fights um, that some people kind of overlook. And one of them is, you know, the corner obviously yelling out and saying, hey, good work, great shot, great this, good that. I don't know how much of an impact that has on the judges. What I think has an impact on the judges is 
even if you're outstriking your opponent, it's the 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 actual um, reaction, the optics of what a punch looks like it does to an opponent, even if it doesn't end up hurting them. And in this matchup, when uh, Machado was landing some big shots on Mays, Mays wasn't really showcasing that he was getting hit or hurt or, you know, wasn't giving this big reaction. But whenever you saw Mays landing on Machado, you would see Machado visibly, you know, take a step or two back or his head would flail black b- back. Not a good look in terms of when it, uh, you're going to the scorecards in a very close fight. You know, judges will obviously look at that reaction big time and probably favor that even if it looks like you're the or even if it ends up being that you're the one that's landing more often so i think that's a big thing that fighters need to look in on is you know of course it it's not good to get hit whatsoever i'm sure it doesn't feel great either but to try to compose yourself even after getting hit and not providing such a big reaction to getting hit even if you're tired no matter what it is do your best in terms of just standing your ground taking that shot on the chin as best as possible and then and, you know, getting back to the the style that you're, um, you know, trying to implement. It's just these big overreactions where it doesn't seem like uh, a punch may not land that hard, but maybe it's the exhaustion. Maybe it's being off balance a little bit. But I found it in this fight that with Machado specifically, when he was getting hit, um, some of these shots weren't hurting him, but just stepping backwards and just having such a huge reaction to it, uh, is probably why the judges actually ended up scoring it in Dante Mays' favor. Again, that second round was the closest out of all of them, in my opinion. Could have gone either way, but I think optically speaking, you got to go with the Dante Mays side there, considering the shots that he was landing was uh, providing a bigger um, reaction compared to what Machado was hitting him in return. So good work from the veteran Dante Mays. Very inconsistent with a lot of his performances. Obviously, this one, another um, you know uh, proof of that, another piece of evidence in regards to that Machado I thought he was going to be able to march him down a little bit more land some bigger shots at least get a bigger reaction but that was not the case all right let's check out the odds that cash here Mays comes in uh, I believe he opened up as the favorite got pushed down to an underdog but it ended up settling roughly around a pick em price where he cashes at minus 105 by decision coming through at plus 260 and the over two and a half coming through at minus 170 Machado's got to get it together because the next one could eventually be his last UFC fight if he's not able to get his hand raised and Mays you know he's been doing this thing for a long time now so, you know jumping back and forth between wins and losses he's really got to get some momentum going if he wants to assert himself into title contention but even if he ends up finding himself there I just don't know if he has what it takes to be competitive amongst those top five uh, heavyweights that are there I'm sure most of them knock them knock him out to be honest but Good win for him here. Really biting down on the mouthpiece in the first and second rounds to get the win. Austin Hubbard gets back in the win column by picking up a unanimous decision victory over Michal Figlak. I'm going to be honest. I did have Austin Hubbard as my dog of the night play, so I'm happy that it cashed. But I really thought we were going to lose that fight going to the scorecards because... I thought Figlak won round one. I'd have to watch it back. I, I don't think I watched it as closely, but all three judges scored it in Austin Hubbard's favor the first round. Second round, I thought Hubbard did enough to win that round. I thought that was his clearest round. And then the third round, uh, I thought was a Figlak round. It just seems like he had a little bit more pop to his shots and all the judges scored that fight in, or that round in his favor. So all three judges, rounds one and two in Hubbard's favor. Very surprising, especially considering that Figlak was minus 370 going in into the second round as a lot of people thought that he won that first round so I thought it was competitive uh, from what I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, I'd have to watch back the first round just to be a little bit more sure. But I really thought going to the scorecards that I was going to have to rip up my Austin Hubbard ticket. Regardless, that's what happens in MMA sometimes. We get some sketchy judging and sometimes we get the bounce, sometimes we don't. Luckily, I am happy to, to cash that uh, plus 135, I think it is, that I got on a Hubbard there. But still... I thought Figlak won that fight. Very surprised it was unanimous decision and not even one judge giving that fight to uh, Figlak. Got to be some questions there. All right, let's check out the odds that cash for this matchup. Hubbard, like I said, cashing as an underdog at plus 150 by decision plus 260 and the over two and a half cashes at minus 215. Solid work from uh, both guys there. Again, unfortunate result from Mihal Figlak. Hopefully the UFC brings him back because I do think we saw some improvements from him in that fight, especially with him teaming up with those Team Renegade guys. Uh, and then Hubbard, you know, good good for his confidence to get this W under his belt, but I still want to see some more improvements from him. Um, and... and um, 
you know, trusting his striking a little bit more. It seemed like when he was moving forward and throwing his straights down the pipe, he was landing, and that's what bloodied the nose of Figlac. Um, but still, um, there are some holes in his game that can be exposed by superior fighters. Figlac could have been that superior fighter as well. But the judges did not see it that way. So ultimately, Austin Hubbard wins this fight, possibly by robbery, uh, and wins this fight by unanimous decision. As most expected, Victor Henry goes out there and beats Hani Yaya. For me, the most disputed thing about this entire fight was whether it was going to go over two and a half, under two and a half, or if it was even going to go to the decision. I ended up leaning with the over two and a half, and we cash with about four seconds. <laughs> I, I believe those uh, uh, the fight finished at two, sorry, six seconds, two thirty six of round three. So uh, under bet is uh, you know getting a bad beat there as uh, Hani Yaya is able to do a good enough job in terms of pushing this fight into that third round and even in that third round where he is close to getting finished victor henry jumps into the guard extends the fight even longer and then finally uh gets the finish just over that halfway point of the third round cashing the over two and a half but still um going out there and getting the finish which is what a lot of people expected i was thinking round three slash decision but the over two and a half is kind of where i was uh kind of thinking this fight will play out the most Haniyaya showcasing you know the one-dimensional jujitsu style you can throw with absolute heat in the striking round but um, if that power doesn't translate if you're unable to get the respect of your opponent or knock them down then you're gonna have to get to the wrestling or pulling guard and that usually doesn't work at this level and Victor Henry was able to showcase exactly why great work from Victor Henry to go out there and get the win let's check out the odds that cashed Henry Moneyline cashes at minus 430 by knockout plus 185 round three plus 700 round three knockout plus 900 and the over two and a half cashing by six seconds at minus 135 good win for Henry to get back on track here let's see if he can start parlaying these wins especially at this stage of his career he's really got to get it going right now if he hopes to get anywhere and for Haniyaya I hope the man st just hangs it up at this point in time. There's no need to keep fighting. Maybe this is his only source of income, but he could open up a school. He's a good enough jiu-jitsu player to do that. Regardless, this night belonged to Victor Henry with a third round TKO over Haniyaya. Absolutely nasty uppercut from Earl Schmedich. Perfectly timed and lands on the chin of Tim Means. Absolutely crumpling him. And I think it only took one more shot for uh, Medich to put Means out and for the referee to step in there. It was clear what Tim Means' approach was in that fight. He wanted to take this to the ground. He wanted to look to grind out Earl Schmedich and take away that big power. But good improvements from Medich in terms of showcasing the patience and poise up against the cage. Digging the underhooks when he needed to working back to his feet and then getting back out into open space and timing that uppercut knowing that it would have been a perfect path to victory for him especially against the guy in Tim Minsu veteran but we know his durability has been a little bit of an issue at this stage of his career and Earl Schmedich showed exactly why big win for Earl Schmedich let's check out the odds that cash he comes in as the big favorite at minus 295 that comes through and cashes minus 105 on the knockout prop round one plus 210 round one KO plus 260 and the under one and a half cashing at plus 115 great work from Earl Schmanager going out there and doing what he should have done to a guy that is at that stage of his career now let's see if Medich can get some momentum going after rebounding from that loss to Mictebike Earl by to means maybe gets one more shot obviously you won that fight against Andre Fialio previously but uh now he gets this uh you know now he takes this L to Medich We'll see how he rebounds from that. Amazing scrap between David Onama and Jonathan Pierce, which goes the full 15 minutes and ultimately comes down to David Onama getting the bigger shots off, having some great reversals throughout the matchup as well, and then getting his hand raised, like I said, on the scorecards. Massive improvements from a guy in David Onama that I thought was more of a one-dimensional fighter coming into the UFC, mainly a headhunter, a guy that would go out there and just knock his opponents out. But he has developed tremendously since coming into the UFC, showcasing improved uh not just takedown defense, but get-ups, reversals, uh, all of that good stuff on the mat. Great 
great work for him. Uh, I see a lot of his work is just from explosions in terms of getting out of these bad spots. Even when he's caught in a, a body triangle or anything like that, he does a great job in terms of exploding out of those spots and opponents have a very difficult time in terms of keeping him in those compromising positions. Uh, DC touched on it. He goes, uh, you know, all of those explosions are going to add up and then later on in the fight, it's probably not going to be the best for him. But he showcased that he can go 15 minutes, a hard 15 minutes and still come out on top. Um, so great work for him there especially against a guy as skilled as Jonathan Pierce, as relentless as Jonathan Pierce, and uh, the amount of pressure, pace, and cardio that Pierce was utilizing. I really thought we would see Onama drown in that, but Onama is showing tremendous improvements, and he has my respect now. You know what I mean? Uh, this was kind of the fight, the type of performance I was waiting for from him to realize whether he is actually as good as people are making him out to be, uh, and this was the perfect test for him, in my opinion. You know, the Gabriel Santos fight, he pulls off the upset there, good win for him, and that's spot uh but i thought pierce would be the tougher opposition and we were getting shorter odds on uh, jo uh jonathan pierce i was very happy to take a shot on him there to win one unit and uh, it didn't come out uh you know as i expected but it's still a very good learning lesson in terms of what uh, david onama has to bring to the table and what his potential actually is so i look forward to seeing how they match him up moving forward Check out the odds that cash here. Onama money line plus 120. By decision, plus 600. Great line there. Um, I thought if he were to win, it would probably be by knockout. But he does a great job in terms of staying competitive in the grappling realm and then still going to the scorecards and getting his hand raised. And then the over two and a half cash is at plus 110. All in all, fight of the night so far. Couple more fights to go. Let's see if anything can top that. And if it does, it will be an absolute barn burner of a fight. That's for sure. It was a little iffy for Janata Dinez early, but he managed to survive the ground and pound onslaught that Austin Lane was shelling out in the first round. But in the second round, Dinez did a great job in terms of utilizing his movement, his takedown defense, and absolutely causing Lane a ton of troubles on the feet and eventually finding that TKO uh, midway through that second round. Great work for Janata Dinez. Uh, I really expected him to go out there and put it on him from the get-go here, but I really expected um you know um i thought we would see superior takedown defense from him uh but you can't really stop you know a guy like austin lane pretty much spearing him the way that he got him to the ground the first uh, round but it was impressive to see how dennis uh, utilized the takedown defense in the second round didn't give up on himself didn't really come into demoralized into that second round and he goes out there and eventually finds the knockout all right, let's check out the odds that cashed here. Dennis obviously cashing as a big favorite at minus 330. His knockout prop was chalky as hell at minus 230, but it seemed to come through regardless. Round two plus 700. Round two knockout plus 750. And the under one and a half cashes, I believe with about 18 seconds left on the clock, it cashes at minus 290. A lot of people probably sweating that chalky under one and a half, but they're able to go out there and cash that ticket. Dennis shows some promise. I would like to see a little bit better um uh, process in terms of him working back to his feet when he does get taken down but i do like his takedown defense i do like his ability to dig the underhooks pivot off back into the center of the cage and then get back to his striking the guy's nasty he doesn't chase knockouts they often just end up coming to him when he sees his opponent rocked he starts to apply a little bit more pressure but i just love the work that we see from this heavyweight you know a little bit more improvements from the mat and we could see uh you know some big things for janata dennis in the future but tonight he celebrates a second round knockout victory over austin lane Irene Silva finally met somebody that would give her a challenge and actually take her to the scorecards. And she made a good, great account of herself, uh, utilizing her wrestling, utilizing her top pressure, and eventually going out there and winning a unanimous decision victory over Eriani Lipsky da Silva, as she's obviously changed her name now. But I'm going to go with Lipsky this one last time until the next time she fights. But great work from Irene Silva in terms of showcasing that she can go the distance and win fights by decision, especially with the control that she's able to maintain but her jujitsu game and her aggressiveness is very impressive the way that she's attacking uh, submissions no matter what position that she's in and whether she's looking to actually complete the submission or utilize it to advance to a more dominant position i think a lot of women are going to have trouble with her going forward uh, i expected Lipsky to showcase a little bit better takedown defense but you have to give some credit to karene silva who did a great job in terms of you know mixing her takedowns especially when she was able to initiate the clinch after throwing a big strike getting 
getting Lipsky's attention to that strike first. And then before she knew it, Silva was able to grab a hold of her, initiate that clinch, and eventually drag the fight to the ground. Good work from Lipsky in terms of using her ta- uh, submission defense and her grappling defense in terms of not getting finished. But she was unable to muster up much offense of her own to even get, you know, a scorecard in her favor. She won a round on two judges' scorecards. <clears throat> Excuse me, but... I think that she's still going to, um, you know, she's, she's improved her takedown defense, but not against fighters that are able to blend it so well behind their t- uh, striking, just as Karina Silva showed. Um, all right, let's check out the odds that cast here. Silva came in as the favorite, minus 165 comes through. By decision, comes through at plus 360, and the over two and a half cash is at plus 135. Great work, once again, from Karina Silva. She's inching closer to that top five. She should get a top five opponent next, and if she's able to keep up this level of success... I wouldn't be surprised seeing her in title contention mid-2025 or the end of 2025. But tonight belonged to Karene Silva as she wins by unanimous decision. After some early grappling success from Ryan Spann as he clearly wanted to go out there and try to get a submission, it ended up working against him as he started to slow down in the second round. He landed some decent shots of his own, but ultimately it was Bogdan Gushkov who went out there and landed a big uppercut to rock Ryan Span and to follow up with a couple more shots so he can notch that second round knockout victory and now make it two wins in a row for Bogdan Gushkov, a name to clearly keep an eye on. Considering some of the big shots that he ate from Ryan Span, I was very surprised that he was able to eat those so cleanly and still march forward, not really even show much issue in terms of of, you know being rocked or uh, wobbled by it at all he walked through it all eventually landed his big shots on span and then eventually got that knockout victory good win for bogdan gushkov let's check out the odds that cash though he came in as the underdog cashing at plus 155 by knockout plus 230 round two plus 1200 round two ko plus 1400 and then the over one and a half caches by about 45 seconds uh, at plus 215 another under one and a half that uh well actually i believe the last one with dinez yeah dinez and uh lane cast with uh, a couple seconds to go there but this one obviously going over again good win for bogdan uh knows that he's uh destined for that top 10 especially after defeating uh the number 11th ranked light heavyweight here a lot of fun fights to throw him into uh very curious to see how the ufc matches up moving moving forward uh but ryan span you know got, got to get back to those early finishing things and not trying to change things up too much by going to his grappling and causing himself to gas out if he probably just put his foot on the gas from the jump like he usually does he probably could have found a knockout and he would be the one getting his hand raised but unfortunately for him it is bogdan gushkov's night getting that second round knockout what a performance from Alex Perez as he wins the first round and then eventually finds that knockout in the second round over Matthias Nicolau. Not even going to his patent and wrestling game, but rather looking to utilize his striking and then eventually open up that beautiful knockout that he landed in the second round. A beautiful work from Alex Perez, who has really been up against it over the last couple of years. Obviously, like I've alluded to in the past, you know, going into 2020 was one of the top prospects. One of the guys that was always a chalky favorite going Going into his fights, he was lined up with a short notice fight against then champion Davison Figueiredo. Got submitted in the first round, and then it went all downhill for him there. Multiple fights that he was forced to pull out of due to some of his own issues, weight cutting issues, all of that stuff. Uh, comes back, fights Alexandre Pantoja in 2022, gets quickly submitted, then has a couple more fights pull out, and then finally gets that matchup with Mohamed Makhayev uh, a couple, uh, I believe, a month back or so, uh, and puts up a very spirited effort. You know, drops the first round wins the second round then ultimately just does not do enough in that third round but you could see that he had high level performances still left in him you know he was a very highly touted prospect back in the day and people are just completely throwing him away now due to some of the unfortunate circumstances outside of the cage for him but he showcased tonight that he is definitely somebody that needs to be taken seriously and now with his mind fully back in the game him active once again he finds himself in the top five now as he gets this knockout victory over number five ranked Matthias Nikolaou Absolutely phenomenal performance from him there. All right, let's check out the odds that Cass Perez comes in as the underdog, cashes at plus 150, by knockout plus 460, round two plus 
twelve or sorry, plus fourteen hundred. Round two knockout plus twenty one hundred, and the under four and a half cashes at minus one fifteen. Again, great work from Alex Perez. You know, you got to really feel for the guy. Pretty much had the entire MMA fan base turn on him due to a lot of the issues, um, you know, with canceled fights and all that. People making fun of him, people making memes about him. And then, you know, again, having that performance like he had against Mukhaev slowly won some people back, but I believe he won the fan base back this uh, tonight with that big knockout over Matthias Nicolau, which is a fight that he came in as the underdog again, right? Like a lot of people were disrespecting him. I had a play on him at plus 150 as I felt that you know he is or plus 160 is the number i got earlier this week he is somebody that needs to be taken um uh, taken seriously like he is he is legitimate and he's still only 32 years old so if he can get a couple more fights in this year who knows if we could potentially find him in another title fight in the very near future you got to give him a top five guy now i would love to see him fight somebody like brandon moreno and to see if he can actually take that next step uh to, to get closer to a title shot great work for alex perez unfortunate result from Matthias nicolau obviously suffering back-to-back knockout losses now he's got to go back to the drawing board and figure it out maybe try to lean on his uh wrestling a little bit more maybe he goes out there and fights Manal Cap. maybe that's a fight for Alex Perez as well a lot of fun things going down out at a flyweight but not a bad serving for the UFC off that uh, historic UFC 300 card weekend off and now we got four straight weeks coming right at us this being the first of the four all right let's put a bow on this uh show here uh there were five knockouts on this 13 fight card two submissions and six decisions uh favorites went seven and five another uh hot card for underdogs or anybody looking to go out there and dog hunt uh and then for the performer of the night for me originally it was going to be david onama you know i was very impressed with his performance against jonathan pierce and working out of those bad positions but then you gotta then you see that performance from alex perez and you know taking everything into consideration uh coming into this fight uh everything that happened over to him over the past couple of years great performance from him and to put a stamp on it with that knockout in the second round absolutely beautiful sight to see there um you know i was feeling it (laughs) when i saw him get the finish there and then pretty much uh you know drop down to his knees in elation and excitement to finally get that finish uh yeah he is definitely my performer of the night who is your performer of the night and let me know how you guys did from a betting perspective but also from a predictions perspective drop a comment below uh pay-per-view week next week for the ufc ufc 301 headed down to brazil i'll have breakdowns for you guys as you guys can see back in the studio back with the video i will be back to my regularly scheduling pro scheduled programming on monday make sure you guys tune in for the mma Lockcast. i'll see you guys then peace